So we train four men, and we realize that there's a multiplier effect of seven. There's improvements in the mason, the carpenter, the steel bender, the farmer, the electrician, the laborer, and the designer um, once we train a foreman. But they can lose their certification very easily if they're bending steel to the point of failure. So they rig up things like this. Yes? Yes, they're right, and he's a contractor then. And he and then if, if a mason is building a house, he's a foreman because he's supervising men. He's not just putting up blocks. He's supervising other parts of the of the, the house of the building. Oh so hold up though. So we train you know, we've trained masons and carpenters and steel vendors and farmers and electricians. We train all of them because they can become foremen. We train them to become foremen. We train them. How do you know if you're trained? Oh fine. You know if you're trained because you go into wallrent.com and you see about 300 people there that are trained already. 300. So I guess I'll tell you, if you are building a house right now and you're entrusting this three, four, five, six hundred thousand dollars to a fellow who is not trained, that is crazy stuff. <laughs> right? So what homeowners usually do is they just hope that he knows what he's doing. They hope, they're taking three, four hundred thousand dollars and they hope, but well, you hope you know what you're doing hoping doesn't make it, um, doesn't create knowledge in the fellow. Go on to worldrent.com. Well, actually go to the foreman on the site, ask him, are you certified? He will say yes, of course, he will say yes. Get his name, go on to worldrent.com, and then you can check to see if he's one of the certified fellows. If he is, you have no problems. You have no problems, I tell you, you have no problems. If he's not, you have a world of problems. <laughs> Guaranteed, a world of problems. <laughs> So corroding, being reinforcement, um, seeing more and more of this. So the fellows come and they put up the formwork for the beams. And you should be using some kind of smock, some kind of uh, uh, separator, so that you keep the rebar, oops, you keep the rebar cage in the middle, so that there's enough uh, protection, concrete protection to your steel. If you don't have these things, usually the fellows sometimes put some smocks on the bottom but not the sides. So when the concrete comes, it shoves all this to one side. And therefore there's no protection whatsoever on one side. There's a lot of protection on one side. Lots on this side. But if this thing shoves up against this formwork, then the rebar is seen. And it corrodes away. And the fellows come and they try to patch it up and it keeps corroding and spoiling the concrete. And it's a mess. Very um, difficult. Um, so eventually uh, it spoils and you just have to, to demolish the structure or part of the structure. But all unnecessary, all you needed to get is some smocks to keep the rebar cage in the middle. Moisture problems, these are things that we have seen a lot of in existing buildings, a lot and I, I believe um, if I'm seeing so much of them you probably have some too. Health is here on the way. Um, so that's moisture running up the wall. So if you have a roof, you really should put on the gutter. Should put on the gutter. Um, the fellas usually put around this uh, pavement right around the house, but that doesn't guarantee anything, really. It's a useful thing since it's muddy you can walk around the house, but it doesn't prevent this moisture from running out the walls. So if you have a gutter, please don't do this. <laughs> Just extend the pipe away from the foundations. Right, extend the pipe away, don't, keep the, don't have the pipe here, and then soak, soak it up. Well, then what we have is this moisture, and it rises up. And it rises up, and when you have moisture underneath, you are sure to have your termites there hiding away. And then they go in the house and do a lot of damage. So, this is what happens. The fellow have this here, but what he didn't do is plaster on the here. So the moisture came, even though he has this, the moisture came, soaked up in the block, and the block is saturated, and that, that becomes, and they, you have the mold problems, and the damp problems, and especially with black mold, that's very dangerous. Um, so you need to plaster this. Now again, if you have a house already done, and the fellow put in one of these, and you think you're having moisture problems, well just knock out a piece of it and see if you plaster underneath. 
this is a little deceptive because by having this right here, you think that under here is plastered because above is. So you think underneath is plastered. It's not. Because it's a way of saving some money. Um, so uh, you plaster it, but you must plaster it with a waterproofing agent in it, like say Apex or Radcon 7 or Penetron. You have to add in some waterproofing agent. You can't just plaster it because the plaster itself is porous. So it's like doing not, do nothing. So you plaster it with a, a waterproofing additive. And that should prevent that from happening. My recommendation, strong recommendation, is that when the fillers are doing the foundation, get them to plaster it right away. You can stop here. You don't have to plaster above right, right away, but certainly the foundation, because that's a special type of plaster, because that's the one that has in your waterproofing additive. So make sure that's done. Um, otherwise, it's going to use the same plaster that it uses above, and then it's not waterproofed. So even though it's plastered, it's still not waterproofed, and therefore you get the damn problems. Unless, again, you want the damn problems. So I like the moisture. And if you don't want it, then uh, do this. Um, right, before your contractor hands over the house to you, I recommend that you get some toilet paper and you put it around each joint. And if it's wet, tell them, no, you're not finished yet, come on, finish it. Because then you get this black mold down here. That's really toxic. It's really dangerous. You don't want that. Um, a problem, again, these are all moisture problems. Moisture problems. You'll be wondering, why am I getting all these moisture problems? Well, it could be this. When they were putting in the pipes, they put it on top of this beam. It's good to have it inside of the beam. But they have it on top of the beam. Um, this is not a good idea. Um, also, the fellows, they step on these things, not before the concrete is poured, but while they're pouring the concrete, but before the concrete is poured, people see the uh, these pipes all over the place and they try to avoid them. Even if you're going on the site, they try to avoid them. But when the concrete is being poured, no one can see them. And you step on them and therefore a joint may get loose and therefore the water will run along here and maybe run across here and they come out here. Now you, you will try jacking up here and you will not find that the, the, it's this joint that's causing the problems. Another problem is that you don't have a damp proof membrane. This is a damp proof membrane. And you have it, but the electrician decided he's going to take it out. Right out. You know, these fellas, you know, they just do these things. Um, actually, he cut the rebar <laughs> so that the moisture will come up and therefore your damp proof membrane is no good. You had it in and you paid for it, but it's no good because the contractor, well, the can't really blame the contractor. Well, you have to because you really should repair it. Um, but the, um, usually as the electrician, he had to get his pipes in. And he comes in on the weekend and does it. So no one can see him, but then you just see it there. Uh, or they don't lap these joints. If they don't lap the joints, then moisture will come up through it. Um, another moisture problem is if you have timber in contact with concrete, you need to waterproof between the timber and the concrete. Otherwise, especially on external uh, walls, the moisture will get down here and therefore you have a wet condition and this will eventually get wet rotted. A wet rotted timber is very weak and therefore the house blows away during the hurricane. So you want to make sure you have some damp proof membrane under here or you can uh, paint under there with some uh, liquid rubber or something but you want to prevent moisture from rising up and creating a damp condition to your timber. In your window or door jam, um, you put the door jam in here and then you, you drill a little hole because you put in, use these blue screws, these concrete screws. And, and it will usually, if it hits it and the water's under pressure, that's the best thing that can happen because then you know that your, your pipe has been hit, water's spewing all over the place, and you can get it repaired. But usually it doesn't get um, punched right through, it just gets fractured. So the screw is long enough to really just um, fracture it. So all is well unless water authority sends on water at some high pressure. And you will normally get that if you are in a water catchment where the water authority is pumping water through. If it's by gravity, then you're okay. 
So it's just a constant flow, you know what the, the, the high pressure is. But if it's pumped, sometimes you get these pipes. And then when you get spikes, you get water leaking out, and suddenly you find water somewhere, and you can't figure out why it's there. And there's no, there's no a pattern to it. It just happens whenever there's a spike. And there's no pattern to the spikes, they just happen. So I recommend take these and put them in the next block so that you have avoided um, the risk of them getting damaged by when you're screwing in your window or door jams. Do not have any pipes, especially electrical pipes, because then you, you drill through and you maybe remove some of the sheathing on the cable, and that is a fire hazard. Most of the fires in Barbados are electrical fires, in the Caribbean actually are electrical fires. And it probably is um, having to do with that. You get some arcing because you've now damaged the cable. Um, roofs, well, usually the fellows do these little U-bars, um, cast them into the concrete, and then they drill a hole in the rafter, is typical, and then they put beam fill to prevent the vermin. And the building code says you can use that, I say don't use it at all. The building code says you can use that, which is the method I just showed you, I say don't use it at all. Um, use this, truss anchor, preferably two, so you have them there sticking up, two of them, and you put your rafter through there, and you lap it around, and then you pour your beam fill, to prevent the vermin from getting inside. And then you cut these off. Now that presents another problem. Um, if you're using, let's say, a termite treated um, timber, like termite treated pine, it's a good timber to use. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, right, because I'm turning this way, but I'm not sure you can hear. Otherwise, it's a waste of all your time. <laughs> um, if this is termite treated timber, by cutting it, you've now created a vulnerability because it's sort of ejected into it and it doesn't get right in the middle. So it's ejected and the end is treated and all the sides are treated. But once you cut it, the middle is exposed. The trauma is going in there and start eating. So if you're cutting it, then you must get uh, Terminex or some um, termite treatment and apply it liberally to the end. Every time you cut a piece of timber, get some trauma treatment and apply it to the end. Otherwise, um, it's not so good. So if you have used uh, one of the old methods, then you can get one of these burning rafter burning connections and use the blue screws and connect your rafter to your beam. These are your connections. Uh, screws, they should be at six inch centers, but at least two of these burning lengths. What I recommend, instead of doing, because it's a calculation that you could do, I recommend just six inches throughout the whole roof can't go wrong. Six inches throughout the whole roof, you cannot go wrong. Termites. Um, since you have Parsons and Rendekill and the Flit and JSPS and all these fellows poisoning the soil, the termites have gotten very smart. Uh, I don't know if it's a mutation or what, but they've gotten very smart. They realize that since they can't come through the soil and therefore come up in the building, they run up the tree and they go across wherever a tree is in contact with the, uh, with the building and they come down from the heavens and eat away. So instead of they come in from below and eating up, the smart termites now are coming from above and eating whatever they can find. Make sure that there's no tree touching your house. Just cut it back. Otherwise, you've got to call an only on these fellows and let them, uh, or rent some, we lose equipment. <laughs> Just um, da your termite damage roof uh, or your walls that are corroded um, and you have this problem. So there's some resources. The first resource is the five common critical construction errors. I have a pamphlet here and if you go to the Walmart College's table at the back you can go and pick up one of these. It's free. Here it is. It's free. <laughs> and it's just generally the five most common things. So when you go on the site, you can look and make sure that at least these things are uh, not done. Uh, resource number two, um, there's a home strengthening guide, how to economically strengthen your house against earthquakes and hurricanes. So if you go to warbrand.com, it's free. And what we have there is we have a, a contract, I, the contractor of, where the contractor lives, 
agree to strengthen the house owned by a woman located at a woman's address in accordance with the methods provided in Walbrecht College's Home Strengthening Guide for a total lump sum cost of this, Barbados dollars. And within so many calendar days, excluding weekends and national holidays. And they have a breakdown, item 1, 2, 3, 4, about 14 items, 14 items, and you may only need to do item 7 and 11 and further 13. But the complete thing is there, depending on what problems you have in your house. And, right, so it has all these little things, so the contractor knows well, very descriptive, so the contractor can see it and quote for a number of, the same thing they have here, a number of different things. There's just a, a few of them. 